YouTube is Brian Proctor back again, and uh, this will be making your own children's book part three. Uh, I was on a roll uh, earlier, so I said I'll just go ahead and do this next part and just get it out. Last time we got into drawing and perspective, and I want to continue to get into drawing because I want to try to keep these videos shorter so that it won't take up too much of your time. So we're going to continue to go on with drawing. Okay, so let's do a little recap. Let's say you you want to draw a children's book. This is your first time doing it. You're not really an artist. You're not really a writer. But um, this one is geared for the person that wants to draw it from one of their family relatives. Family relative, I guess it's the same thing. Uh, let's say you see your grandchildren, or your grandchild or your child. You want to draw that book based on them or one of them. So this will show you how to translate their face into more of a cartoony face now i could grab a picture but i don't want uh to get somebody's picture and then draw them as a cartoon because youtube has all these right things so we're just gonna i'm just gonna give you some tips on drawing a picture from uh, a character uh, not a character uh, a child or one of somebody you know a child you know so the one thing you have to look at is what is one of the one features or things that stands out um, in your child or in that, that character that you want to do? Maybe that person has big ears. You want to take that and you want to expand on it. Expand, expound, expand on it. So let's just say they have big ears. So you want to you wanna take those ears and you just want to make them extra large. Let's just say uh, as a child, you could be writing it, um, the book about your grandson when he was a baby. He's, he's grown now and you wanted something for his children to read. And maybe he had like a runny nose all the time. So you, you can always have like some, some snot or something under his nose. Um, he had big eyes. So you give him extra, extra big eyes. When he was a kid, he always had, you know, extra, extra big eyes. No, when he was a kid, he had big eyes, so you want to give him extra, extra big eyes is what I'm trying to say. So you want to take that one thing that made him stand out or her stand out, and you want to, you want to do that and just play on that a little bit more. And uh, for instance, every, every child has a favorite something, whether it be a favorite toy or favorite hairstyle or, or um, uh, t-shirt or something, that would be another good thing. Maybe maybe he or she had a favorite t-shirt and he always wanted to wear that Batman t-shirt or that Oscar the Grouch t-shirt until the thing tore up and you finally had to basically throw it away without them knowing it. So uh, that that's another good thing to to focus on. And they would say, oh, yeah, that's him. That's him. He always wore that T-shirt or that's her. She always had that ponytail or, or whatever. So that's one thing you want to, to, to as I say, focus on in your child. You, you might not be able to draw him or her to look just like they do in real life. But as I say, you can use some of those characteristics that make that person stand out. Like when he was born, you can say, oh, he had big ears. He heard everything. So just make him extra big. Um... What else is there? And I'm just drawing a rough face uh, just because and adding some stuff to it. He might have had a bigger head. He said, wow, that child has a big head and not enough hair to cover the head. Uh, what else? What else? I'm just kind of drawing right here. Let's just say he didn't have enough hair to cover all his head because he had a big head. And I guess I should ink this, but as I say, I'm trying to cut back on the time. But those uh, little things that you can you can pick out to draw your, your character that re resembles your child in some way. As I say, that way people say, oh, yeah, that Jimmy always had that Batman t-shirt on. He would never take it off. Um... Look at... Things like Charlie Brown. Charlie Brown never took that T-shirt off. But
But basically for that, it was just basically because you would um, recognize the character. He always had that T-shirt on. Uh, but there was like, what was, what was the guy? Um, not Schroeder? Who had the blanket? Who had the blanket? You probably know who had the blanket. Never give up the blanket. So in, in other words, you would know that that was that character because he always carried that blanket with him. And there was Pigpen, who always was in a cloud or dirt or dust. So things like that you would know to expand on to make your character resemble the, the, the person that you're trying to draw. I don't know why I'm tripping over my words today, but I am. So, and this is a girl. And maybe she always had bangs or something or big ponytail. So you can have like really, really huge she always wanted her hair in the, the ponytail. She had really, really huge, almost like Harley Quinn ponytail. Or she liked to wear this particular type earring and you can have the big earring in her ear. Or maybe she had a loop earring. Just, you know the character or you know your, your yeah, your character, your study character better than anybody else. So you can say, oh yeah, 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 he did this or she did that. So that would be perfect for them when you're designing the character. The last video we went over was um, drawing the body. So this one is just basically to get you to look at um, what characteristics you want to have your character if your character is, is mirrored after somebody that you know, maybe a neighbor's kid, any, anybody you know. So. Let's move on to expressions or emotions. One thing you're going to have to do in a children's book are have emotions, surprise, uh, joy, anger, the whole nine yards. You're going to have to go through the gamut of emotions. So one thing is, if you're doing this for the first time, you want to keep it simple. Keep your eyes round. And then there's a reason to keep your eyes round because it's easier to um, show emotions. Your eyebrows are one of your main things. Well, let's put it this way. Your eyes are your main features. When you first see someone, you look at them in their eyes. And then that, that tells you a lot about a person. And then you look at the rest of them, the head, the hands, the hair, the whatever. But their eyes always tell a picture. So let's say I do this. This is basically your average kind of happy expression. Let's drop the mouth a little bit. The eyebrows. But now if I took the eyebrows and I'm just working and hopefully this is all being focused. Your nose really doesn't change. I mean, it, it'll, 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 it'll scrunch up sometimes, but you know, it really, you really doesn't change your, your face too much. So that's why you, a lot of times people use a V or maybe a, just a little curve or just even a straight line for your nose. It, it really doesn't matter unless you're, you're focusing on that child's big nose. So, um, eyebrows. So, the way it could be kind of a sad is you, you tilt your eyebrows to the side from anger. Bring your eyebrows in. Um, kind of a blank look. You put your eyebrows up. Your eyebrows can do a lot to show emotion. Am I focused again? Because I keep moving my paper and losing it. It's another thing. Now, the reason you do your eyes round, you want to stay with eyes round, big, big eyes, because you can do the same thing with the eyes as you can with the eyebrows, just by cutting it a little bit to give you an added bit of emotion. Now the cat is a cat. What am I saying? A cat. Now the guy is even extra sadder because his eyes have taken on the same shape as an eyebrow. Same with this. You've seen this so many times. If you look at comic books, the evil eye is flat on the top and it curves at the bottom. This one would stay the same. This one would probably, you could probably open it a little wider or make it more uh, oval shape to give it that. And then Put the eyes right there in the middle or the pupils right there in the middle to give it that wandering shape. Now your mouth does put play 
uh, play a lot into the role as well. I don't know. The faster I talk, the more I lose it. And I'm trying to keep my video short. Just a small mouth like that. It gives you that wondering look. Uh, angry, of course, you know, you want to turn the, the mouth upside down. And if he's really, really pissed off, you want to show some teeth. The sad one, uh, that that would be more the same way because the eyes are shaped like that. He won't be mad. He'll be sad. Another thing you can do, too, to add to your expressions is make it sideways. Make the mouth. The mouth does not always have to be in the middle. You can put it uh, to the side. Same thing for this. But the best thing to do is just that gives it more of a wondering look. He's like, hmm, I don't know. Who broke the eggs? It gives you that 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 look. Changes. The best thing I can say you can do is just take a paper, piece of paper, and just draw a bunch of ovals and just play with it. Keep your eyes open for the for the time being so you can you can change it up. And you can do this all day. You can just think of emotions. Like if your child was frowning all the time, you had somebody that frowned, you can, you know, you can do the, the frowny kind of face. Well, that's not frowning, that's kind of more angry. You just keep that, he's always frowning. Frowny, that's good, could be a name of your character, a character. And just like I said, do the, do the, do, do, use the eyebrows at first. Keep doing the eyebrows. You can have another one. For just in the mouth, a mouth. Or should I say a group of um, ovals for eyebrows, a group of ovals for mouths, and then put them together. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's just something that you're practicing on. Shift the eyes, shift them in different positions to where... Um, they add to the facial expression. Uh, it's a children's book. You want it to be funny. So it doesn't always have to be. Each eyebrow is the same way. You play with it. Play with it. Um, what? Just play with it until you figure out an emotion what emotion that plays and then keep that actually you can name them you know uh you know mad uh happy sad thinking and just keep that uh, in a folder keep that because if you do decide to draw a children's book it might come out you might enjoy it you might want to do another one there are so many things you can do and just common knowledge maybe you have your maybe your grandchild or your child wants to draw as well if you have that 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 um that gene or that wants to make you draw maybe your child wants to draw as well and you can give them the paper hey this is what I drew from my emotions you can use that too and what you learn here you can teach your child or your grandchild cousin uh, nephew niece whatever so let us and as I say you can play with the eyes and however you want to do it uh, this one I guess he would be he would be more blue because the eye is more down. This wouldn't be the eyebrow. This would be part of the eye. The eyebrow would be here. This is the eye. And that's a hard one to do. I would basically I guess I would leave the eye off. But what I'm trying to do is you have your eye. Your eye would be half closed, shall I say. And this would be the eyebrow, and so uh, the the where the eyelashes are the part of the eye that closes. And the other one was open. That's a weird expression. And you just have you leave that little bit of wrinkle over there.
and one good thing to try if you are having trouble drawing faces and then anytime you draw a face you want to really split it down the middle especially in the beginning and that line tells you where your angle is if you have trouble doing a face a good thing is to get an egg and hard boil and a hard boil egg I'll just draw a couple egg shapes and draw a face on the egg that way just a regular face like we're, we're doing now. now if you create the character face that you want and you can draw it on the egg even more perfect and then just look at the egg remember boil the egg let it cool off and then draw on it and then you can do a line down there so however you turn the egg you don't have to draw this line because you have your 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 ah, i can't think of it because I'm, I'm thinking too fast and i'm drawing too fast you have the angle that you want to do so when you turn your egg you already have your picture going the way you want it to go even if it's a sharp turn it's turned almost all the way reference that's what i'm trying to say you have your reference that you can draw from it makes it a lot easier when you have reference to draw from something and then even if you turn the egg up how's that nose that nose is like this So you can have that upshot. Just draw, get your egg, boil it, let it cool off, please, and then draw on it. Um, you can use a sharpie. I don't know if a sharpie will actually go through the the um, shell after a time. Just use a, a, a pen or a pencil, something dark that won't really rub off from holding, and then eat the egg later when you get hungry. But that's a good way to work on uh, faces from different angles. And then you can relate that to your drawing because drawing a side face, you'd have to, it's the same way as drawing the front face. You just turn it to the side. Your eyes are here. You put your nose going to be halfway and your mouth halfway that. But for a child, remember, you want to have more head. So all this is going to be located lower or lowered. It would be lowered like well i don't know gonna say like so but it would be lowered a whole lot more and then halfway your chin is going to be the halfway mark and your, your ear is going to be on that line here and do a better face than that but this it becomes a grown-up face more the more i do this children's face is going to be different but you have to come up with your character and then you draw your character from different angles and then you'll know what it looks like so when you're drawing it, if you need to draw it from the side, if you've got fat cheeks and a little chin or a puffy kind of chin, little ears come out here, maybe you've got a turned up nose, bigger eye on one side, usually by the eyebrows, eyebrow eyelashes, you can tell the person is turned to the side or not, and you got the puffy thing puppy chin but as I'm saying you would have to you would have to draw your character from the front and then just move it to the side you know, bit by bit as I say if you can if you can draw the character right out right off the right off the bat this is all my notes and then draw it on the egg it makes it a whole lot easier when you when time comes to draw, my brain is always two sentences ahead of what I want to say. Another good thing you can do is look in the mirror when you make uh, your, your expressions because uh, I think just about every artist would do that unless they have it down packed. Even the artists in Disney Studios would have a mirror 
and they'll look at it and they'll make that expression so they can get it right. Okay, one last thing before we go. Uh, let's say you are drawing a group of kids. And it, I mean, it's easy to draw a group of kids when you have, uh, when they're all there flat next to one another. I mean, that's, that's pretty simple. But if you want to draw them in perspective, let's say one is in front of uh, the other in a room somewhere and you want to draw the other one in the back. So you have your, 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 your room, here's your door, and you want to, here's your one kid here. And you want another kid back here. Now, one way you can do is uh, line up the eyes on the top of the head. Let's just say for this one, because it'll be down too low, let's just say we'll line up the top of the head. And there are several ways you can do that. So the top of his head should be here, along with that one. And this is the floor. Like that. And that's one way, because... If, let's just say he's he's looking back at this guy. This guy will be in perspective. He'll be the same size because the head is there. As long as your, your feet are not way down here somewhere, uh, it'll still work, but it'll tend to be a grown-up by doing it that long. You kind of have to feel how it's going to be. Now, that's one way. You could have done the eyes as well. Let's just say if I did one here and the eyes... His head is here, his eyes are on that same line. It still would work. You'd have to probably drop it down a little bit, but it still would work. There are different ways to to do people in perspective. And if I threw this guy, then I'd have to bring him down just a little bit more and he would fit with them. But it's really hard to teach in five or 10 minutes, which I'm trying to keep my videos really shorter. Another way to do it is if I have my paper, and I have the paper already drawn out, but I like to draw the square. And let's just say I have a bunch of people. No, this is my this is my um, horizon line here. Let's just say I have a, a guy here or a kid here, and I want the rest. No, the horizon line would have to be down here. It's drawing a triangle to point down to that horizon line. And then you just fit other people in that. As long as you, you keep them in this triangle here, they'll fit. So I can put one way back here. And he will fit along with those two. Now, what if I wanted to put some kid over here? The same thing happens when we do the other one. From top, just take it all the way over to the bottom. And then your head... Remember, it's going to stop on that bottom line. So if this was like a hall, hall room scene in school and you had a bunch of kids all standing around or maybe even in the, the lunchroom, this is how you do it. Same thing with this. If I want to put somebody standing next to him, all could be a her. Same thing. Head. Feet. And it would fit in proportion. Now, if this cat was somebody was a little little uh, shorter, but it would be the same thing on this line. You could say this line goes straight across. This was a, a, um, a shorter guy. As long as he's standing on that line and the head is about the same proportion, it would still work. So these are just ways to draw your characters in proportion. As I say, this would be your floor. You could have your wall somewhere. Let's just say this is the back of the wall. This is the wall would have to go behind their feet. So wall here. I'm just trying to find a different color. Let's just say this is your wall. Where they all are. This is that. Your doorway. Let's just say there's a door here somewhere where the other students are coming in. As long as your feet are past this or down past a wall, you're good. 
and they will all fit in. So that's just ways to do it. And yeah, I'll get into more perspective doing some interior designs using the boxes and so forth. And it, it, it's a lot to, to draw, but once you get the, the know-how, I guess, it's just like a puzzle. You put a piece of puzzle together for the first time, it's hard, but you take it apart and you put it together again and again and again, it gets really easy. So on that note, I will leave you guys to work on what I've showed you today in this video. Okay, I am out.